Welcome everybody to the first installment of Math Crafts, where we make a fun math craft. Today we'll be learning how to make this bad boy, called the Hexa Hydroflex. It's a pretty nifty craft that I made at my math group recently. It's a little bit tricky, so if you fail the first time, that's okay. I did too. But once you learn it, you'll have a show-stopping skill for all of your friends. If you've spent any time at all on math YouTube, I'm sure that you've seen the hexaflexagon. This craft is a three-dimensional extension of that. If you haven't made the hexaflexagon before, it's pretty fun, and I recommend watching Vihart's videos about it. I'll leave a link in the description. Things that you will need for this craft are a piece of paper, some scissors, not entirely necessary, but very helpful, four of your favorite colors, and a good attitude with lots of perseverance. So let's get started. First off, we need to make our paper proportionally one by two. You can use any method you want to do this, including measuring with a ruler, but I like to fold the paper in half and then make a square so that when I unfold it, the two squares together have the correct proportions. Okay, so first real step. We're going to fold the paper in half hot dog style. I don't know if you guys had the same experience with hot dog style and hamburger style as I did, but teachers used to use it because they didn't want to teach us the words horizontal and vertical. Anyways, fun times. So after you have your hot dog fold, we're gonna take the top and the bottom of the paper and fold it to the center to make a nice little strip. And then once we have that strip, we'll divide it into eighths. We can do this by first dividing into half and then dividing into fourths by bringing each end to the center fold. So once we have our fourths, we can divide each one in half to make eighths. And if you've been following the proportions, then each eighth will actually also have proportions one by two, or it will be made up of two little squares. Okay, now since we have all of these squares, we're going to fold along the diagonal of each square. So you can do this by bringing the bottom edge of your strip to match up with a vertical line that you have folded. That's kind of a terrible description, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to do this all along the strip. Again, we want to make sure we have very nice crisp creases to ensure that our hexahydroflex will go the right direction, because that was my pitfall the first time I did this. So now that I have creases going one direction, I'm going to do the exact same thing along the other diagonals. And also make sure that you are lining things up as best you can. If the creases are a little bit off, then it will just make things more challenging when it comes to put the, to put the craft together. So now you should have this strip with all of these nice diamond patterns. And we're just going to make vertical folds that intersect the cross of the diagonals. So you should have half of them already because that was when you divided the strip into eights, but we'll just fill in the rest of it now. Again, making sure to line things up nice and clear. Okay, so now that I have this nice strip, I'm going to fold it accordion style just to make sure each crease is going the right direction. So the ones with two intersection points of the diagonal lines are going to face out, and the ones with just one intersection point are going to face in. 
You don't really have to do this step. I kind of added it, but I found that it helped me put the whole thing together better. Okay, so now that you have this accordion type shape, we're just going to cut off the last unit since this is a hexa hydroflex and not a hepta hydroflex. Now we can finally link the whole thing together. We're going to tuck one end into the other by lifting up the flaps and make sure that the outward facing creases line up. So the inner edge should go one unit into the outer edge. That doesn't really make sense, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing here and that will make it a little bit more clear. And once we have that, you should be able to make this nice six pointed star because of the way that we folded the creases in the accordion. And then our next step is to push in the small triangles on the outer edge. This should be where the crease points out and we're going to do that both on the top and the bottom of our shape. Our next step is fairly similar and we will just push in the outside diamonds. You can see the three rows of diamonds going around the shape, and we will just isolate the middle row by tucking in the top and the bottom. This is by far the trickiest step, so if it takes a little bit of fiddling, don't worry. You can see me here, I'm having to like reach my finger in and like pop out the creases so that it folds the right way. If you just keep on fiddling with it, then eventually it will fall into place. And there it is. Now that we have our hexa hydroflex, we can flex it by turning it over and pushing in the creases of all of these diamonds so that it can fold properly. Normally you don't have to do that, but since it's brand new, we need to sort of reinforce the creases that we've made. And once you have all those creases pushed in, you can push in the center of the hexahydroflex and bring the outer corners to the middle. And this should turn the shape over. One sort of drawback of this is that there's that one side that's disconnected because we fold our strip over. So there's this gap. I'm not sure if there's a way to remedy that or not but it does kind of annoy me. So let me know if you figure out a way to make it better. I don't think simply taping the sides together will work because it needs some sort of room of movement. So problem for another day. If you enjoy this boring white hexahydroflex, be my guest and keep it that way. But if you're like me and you enjoy a little bit of color, then feel free to color it however you want to. I like choosing four different colors and doing each row a different color, keeping the top and the bottom half rows the same so that when you fold it back up, they make a full row and each face has a different color on it. On another note, the flexagon trend is kind of a big thing. Matt Parker recently posted a video on Numberphile about the tetraflexagon. I don't know if you guys saw it, but he claimed that the tetraflexagon was one of the best flexagons, or rather, one of the most overlooked. And while I do concede that it is an overlooked flexagon, I'm not sure if I like it better than the hexaflexagon, because I think the hexagon shape is much more aesthetic. So I haven't, I haven't actually made the tetraflexagon yet, so maybe after I make it, I will have a change of heart. But 
these hexaflexagons are not that difficult to make and I think that there's a lot more reward with it. I love to, whenever I'm hanging out with a child and we don't have anything to do, I like to teach them how to make math origami and I find that the hexaflexagon is always a, always knocks it out of the park because it's a fun toy and they get to learn about math and they think it's pretty cool. So you guys can try this on children sometime if you want to. One last thing is that I find it interesting that both the versions of the hexaflexagons have faces which are a multiple of three. The trihexaflexagon, the simpler version, has three faces and the hexahexaflexagon, the more complicated one, has nine faces. But our hexahydroflex has four faces, which is kind of weird because it also is a hexagon. My conjecture is that this is because the sides are made up of squares instead of equilateral triangles, but I really have no idea. So let me know if that also interests you or if you have any other theories. So thank you all for watching. I know that this video is kind of unusual as compared to the other ones that I've done, but hopefully you liked it because I'm planning on doing more math crafts videos in the future. Okay, see you all soon. Bye.